words themselves become a rhythm conditioning and due to the impact of slavery and colonialism upon us we have gotten away from that art of talking and we abuse each other with words that necessarily be a fanatic about their religion and they tend to distort the conversation and that way they don't allow you to have full communication because they're rapping so we have to use these techniques so we won't get into arguments and conflicts with one another. We have to go back to the African art and science. And we should pinpoint what it is that we are talking about. We shouldn't use slang and use a whole lot of unnecessary words. Without. Now, the sumptuary laws, which were laws that were imposed upon African people after slavery, stopped us from doing a lot of things. These were poor, or we were able to uh, afford a the car, we had to buy a cheap car because the Lord prevented us from doing that. So we talked to white people and we were free from the sumptuary laws. We just said anything we wanted and did anything we wanted because we were free. And we thought that these ways of talk talking allows us to be free in our communication because we won't abuse each other if we follow these tips that I'm going to give you. Now we don't want to attack someone to them and abuse them. We want to go back to being courteous to one another because the objective of talking is to reaffirm Ma'at and to reaffirm togetherness amongst us. A lot of talk show. These talk shows have a great impact upon us and we begin to talk to each other as if we are talk shows. That's the way the Europeans are training us now to talk and to abuse each other. Talk show formats in the movies, uh, waiting to exhale and in television, living color and all the black shows and use this kind of format of talking to train us to keep a view go back to that and we're going to it's a step-by-step -step process that we have to follow and i'm going to go over that process for you now i'm going to put up this uh transparent and this way you won't set up each other to fight with each other using words you won't be doing that gossip talking with your voice it's more effective now than you can talk as you can see from the English words over here and the Egyptian words here, meaning African, we have the word abut, which means which means attack in English. We have atom, which is the red autumnal sun, and that means autumn in English. And as you can see, the English title counts with that kui or cow, and we say cow in English. These are African words, and these are distortions of African. We're returning the language back to its African way of pronunciation and grammatical form. We're not speaking Ebonics, we're actually speaking the words, correcting the African words, and speaking a form of Ebonics. We have mer, he who rules, and we get the word mayor from that. There are many Africans. These are words that we use in nutrition in my, in my time. Now, the word by or see or sign or see, which means sun, and the by ta, ta comes from to, which means teach, amona, amino, all that means the power of God. So when you combine by ta, amen, you, it means give the sun power, an amount. Aman means God or power. And from aman, we get amino, aman, amino acid. Amon is a black god, unclean. So when you combine the word amino acid, you get unclean black god. The Germans who put out the periodically the salt, or natrium, and calcium, they gave them negative meanings, or meanings to support their worldview, which meant to criminalize and inferiorize these words and colonize these words so that we get these kind of spiritual vibrations from them when we use them, such as mineral which comes from the word men, goddess of which means the one, men as al, which comes from the word sun, or ra, which is sun is the expression of energy. So when you combine, such as the, when you distort the word salah, which means garden of the gods, you get the word salad. When you distort the word menet, or nutrition, you, er, it means order. So men, you means of the order, life, food. Then we have another. We get calcium. Which you, when you break it down, you get the word ka, si, um. Ka, ka means without darkness. Spirit in darkness, calcium. These are the distorted 
cosmological or points of view do this deliberately to make us feel that those science is hard to understand. They make the word spiritually negative to us. Such as magma at, which means balance, righteousness, justice, and me, or nia, means purpose, and sa, soul, si, means sun, and am. These are the negative connotations to these words. They were used every day. Iron, as you can see, comes from fair rum. Rum comes from the old word rumbulium, which means crazy. So when you buy, combine ferium or iron, ferrum, together, you get crazy black mind. Hold it up there a while so you can look at the word sodium, and natrium, and this definition. And you can look at the word zinc as I come. Zinc comes about knowledge. Black or stupid. Vitamin C, ascorbic acid, means unclean black mind or low light. Vitamin B3, niacin, nia, C, comes from sate, fehute, which means to learn, and ra means sun, and mem means birth. Black cannot learn. Vitamin E, tocophero, to, in house, mind of the black dot, etc., etc., offset. Uh, Osiris means rebirth, Kara means tree or evergreen, etc. means rebirth, what you were saying, say, etc. It means more words, or the rebirth of more words. You are using the African word, etc. Kara, Osiris, Kara, and Dakta, or Dakta, or ta. Now we're going to do some reformation, reparation of these words here. We're doing some information reparation, reparation of the words, so that we can be clear on the meaning. We've been brainwashed to believe that they mean one thing. Uh, we all pick up the spirit of these words because we are spiritual people, African people. So we have to resist this kind of brainwashing. This comes out of Corbini Asante's book, The Psychotechnology of Brainwashing. This uh, affirmation, such as I am an African person, I have been initiated into the rites of passage of my, in their descent. Number two, I will never surrender my mind or my own free will. Three, I will continue to resist domination by all means of any action which might be harmful to my community. These are the affirmations that we have to say to resist the brainwashing that's being done to us by the television, talk shows, those media systems. Let's move on. Now, what I'm talking about, about and when I'm speaking about communication, is simply this. Comments on events, especially matters that are racist. Do not call a person a racist. Instead, describe a remark or an act as racist or incorrect. Examples, white supremacy. The things that were done last week were the type of things that are characteristic of racist acts. We don't say, this is a, uh, let's be more specific. Do the following when talking with a person who indicates that he or she does not intend for the talk to be know the conversation is not going in a positive direction. They have no intention of the conversation going in a positive direction. And here's the things you should do. When the person asks a question, answer that question. Do not call any person a liar. Do not name call in conversation. That causes the conversation to go in a negative way. And we want to keep all conversations in the direction of my heart towards the right of full of junior which is the independent uh, compensatory code uh, for victims of white supremacy. When come calling the person a name, be specific. Calling the person a name does not help clarify what is going on. Take, a partic take particular care not to say to or about <coughs> any say that what you said may is incorrect. But saying that a lie is not specific enough. Admit your thoughts and admit your fears when you're in conversation with someone. If a person is easily willing to admit his or her faults and fears or weakness, he or she will, by so doing, develop the will to seek truth and to use the truth in such a manner as to best promote justice. Let's move on to the next example. Now, we African people have to stop fighting amongst each other. We're just fighting, and this is the language we have to use to avoid fighting with each other. Do not fight and kill, argue with, or otherwise show hostility toward any person. Call yourself by the name, nickname that you want to be called. So here's, here's the reason, explanation. It is just and correct to call all persons by the names, nicknames, and titles of that person. There's discussion going down a negative trail and cause a lot of conflicts in the relationship. Now, say for instance, like, uh, did you do? You should say nothing and do nothing. Now, the name caller will say, I said you're a dirty, filthy bastard, so is your father and your three sisters. 
Say nothing, do nothing. The name caller, you don't have to answer, you stupid son of a bitch. You must be a stupid son of a bitch. Your mother was a common whore and everybody knows it. What should you do? Now, at this point, you may want to criticize the person. In some way, use the criticism to promote information so the person may not do this and to be constructive criticism. You should think about this. You should have a plan. And the art and science of talking gives you a plan. This is I always plan and get in a huddle and make a plan. In basketball, they do something, they come back and they draw a little diagram. They make a plan. And in the art of science of talking, it helps you to plan your emotions. So you have thought questions. When you're being criticized, do you think less of yourself? When you offer criticism, do you think less of the person you criticizes? Do you criticize yourself? Who's the sitting critic? Criticism, you say, I won't say that because I know they do this. When you are criticized, do you understand the criticism? When you are criticized, do you pay more attention to how you make a criticism? You say, I don't want to listen to the word they're saying because they have an attitude. I just don't like the way they said it. So you're not paying attention to the criticism, which may be valuable information for you. You tend to criticize at inappropriate times or inappropriate places. What are your feelings? These are feeling questions. Feelings. Do you feel hurt when you're being criticized? Do you feel rejected when you're being criticized? Do you feel angry when you're being criticized? Do you feel embarrassed when you're being criticized? Do you feel embarrassed when you are criticizing someone? I criticize. Do you check to find out if the criticism you give are clearly understood? Do you hesitate to criticize those who are close or important to you? Do you feel a difficulty? difficult to accept criticism. You retaliate with the criticism with someone with another criticism. The general questions here. General questions. Which are difficult or is neither difficult? What is the most difficult kind of criticism for you to give? Why? What is the most difficult kind of criticism for you to take? What? Who is the person from whom it is most difficult for you to take criticism? And why? This is to help you develop a plan. The plan. This is getting into the science of conversation and talking. Now, talking and thinking is something we call neurotransmitters. This is the chemical language of the brain. Say, for instance, vitamin B6 helps to bring this information into your brain. With the appetite, it also helps to bring information in your brain. Taurine stops people from having convulsions. Lysine keeps infection. And we have GABA, GABA amino benzoic acid, which helps you control your baby. And we have tyrosine, which is good for someone who is what you call hyper, helps you to steady yourself. And glutamine, which helps you to hold information, and helps build memory. It's good for someone who has memory problems. Self and these are vitamins help you control your mind. Melatonin helps you to keep a steady state helps to absorb more information. These are sometimes missing when you're talking to someone. They're missing because of the diet. Processed food robs you of those vital nutrients. What, what also stops you from accessing your intelligence in your brain, excuse me, I have this backwards, let me turn around correctly for you. What also stops you from processing information in your brain is the fact that we are taught about our brain incorrectly. The energy efficiency of the brain. This is a PET scan that reveals how the brain delegates mental information or tasks. Now this PET scan like that right here reveals how this man, who is Miles Davis, who is one of our ancestors now, he's a jazz legend, how Miles Davis' brain functions. The analytical left hemisphere of his brain listens to music. We say that music is creative and all of that, so you would think that you would hear that with your right hemisphere, your right mind, but he listens to music with his left mind, and he plays music with his right mind. They're cross functions, and what helps them cross that functions is something called a locus corollis, right here, the middle brain, which is full of melanin and can switch back and forth and use whatever side it wants to use to process information or it can process information directly inside of it because of the melanin content. Black folks think differently. Their brains function differently from Europeans. But we're taught about our brains incorrectly, and therefore we don't know how to access them. We don't know how the information is processed, and we don't know how to feed that. 
with the proper nutrients, as I showed you before. And that happens because of the brainwashing that we looked at earlier. This brainwashing I'm talking about. Let me get this steady for you. These are the clinical signs and symptoms of brainwashing. Someone who's been subjected to racism, white supremacy, oppression as we call it, segregation, white supremacy, are victimized. And this victimization shows in their behavior and their ability to learn. So a young child from ages 6 to 12 will show these signs and symptoms of white supremacy. They will have learning disabilities, poor verbal and math skills. They have confusion with their identity because they're using European, or the European point of view to see the African point of view, and that causes a distortion. They're not able to access their own intelligence. And they will have gender conflicts. That is because it's built in European sexuality, that heterosexuality always is accompanied by homosexuality. And we have low self-esteem because everything that's positive and uplifting is white and everything that's negative is black, coming from white supremacy. They'll be alienated from their own race and culture. White supremacists do not want you to identify with your own race and culture because that will cause unity and any form of unity will cause destruction of white supremacy. So this is what we're taught as children alienate ourselves and like just like black culture african culture so we say i'm not african i'm african-american then you have guilt and shame and hostility towards yourself so you have that toward anyone that looks like yourself withdrawal and depression you'll be very depressed because you can't have the success of white people probably because you're not white you have low self-confidence because all competent people and all competent things are done by white people and you have phobic distortions and anxiety and shame of your physical feature when they carve up your face and nose like Patti LaBelle or Michael Jackson or Janet Jackson. You have psychosomatic disorders. You have lack of knowledge of your own African culture, heritage, language, history, and religion. You won't be able to see that Christianity and Judaism, being a Jew, being a Christian, and being a Muslim are all European religions, and they use European books. So you won't see that. You'll think everything that's negative is African, everything positive is white. Now let's look at the signs and symptoms of brainwashing on the 30 to 60 year old group. Because this just keeps developing and developing until you get it into this category here. Each time you progress in your age, the teenage and young adults, you add more of this brainwashing on to you. You're saturated more because you've been in the public school system longer, so you have more brainwashing. That will cause alcohol and drug abuse, which is a form of self-hatred and it's a form of chemical suicide, where you use these liquid chemicals to kill yourself. And you continue on with your lack of knowledge of African culture. There will be a lot of gender, rever gender reversal. They use homosexuality and lesbianism as a form of self-hatred to punish themselves. They use sexual perversions, imitation and praise of white and Greek culture. We dress like white people, wear their shirts and ties, their high heels, their hairstyles, which is showing a hatred of African culture, and they fear white authority. In other words, they will only respect white people in authoritative positions and not black people. Black people have a difficult time taking supervision from black people. That's taught as part of the slavery trauma. We have personality disorders, psychomatic disorders, high blood pressure, hypertension, stress, depression, lack of economic cooperation development. That's all. In other words, we help support white institutions, white banks, white stores, and won't support black stores, African stores. And then sometimes we hide in re being religious fanatics into Islamic beliefs or Christian beliefs. We hide in it. We feel guilt and shame. And all of this is just a continuous development of white supremacy in every area of our behavior and thought and actions and how we see ourselves and each other. Now let's move on. Now, in order to understand how we're talking to one another, we have to have empathy. We have to put ourselves in the other person's shoes. And this is the empathy wheel. Empathy. You put yourself in another person's shoes, see how they feel when they're talking to you, and how they feel when they hear what you're saying, and by your body language, and by the tone of your voice. This is developing empathy. Empathy helps you have more justice, more responsibility, more forgiveness, courage, to stand up for what you believe, wisdom, 
honesty. You get wisdom, and wisdom gives you awareness, and awareness gives you consciousness. You have honesty, generosity, kindness, tolerance, respect of self and others, cooperation and brotherhood. All this occurs because you have empathy. Now, the mind is divided up, some divided up into the subconscious mind and the conscious mind. And this is depicted in this drawing here. The division, the conscious mind and the subconscious mind. And some people call these parts energy clusters in your body. Some the Indian people call them chakras. But this is, these are the chakras in your body as depicted in this ancient African drawing. Again, we have the chakras of states of consciousness, states of your mind and your body as depicted in this African Egyptian uh, drawing, which is about 3,000 years old. And here again, we have it on the scale of justice and rightness on the Jijid. Ikmir Shekum Kepra Al Tik Safik. I'm showing you that this is an African science, and our ancestors have always been aware of this. But we tend to think that we are, we use, we're Af white people, and we use a lot of Af European perspectives, and European ways of understanding ourselves. But actually, we don't even sleep like Europeans. We sleep like African people. European sleep is measurable and observable. They measure their sleep by the electrical currents in their brain. They have low beta, alpha, theta, delta, and REM. REM sleep is mediated by mel melanin. The more melanin you have, the more rapid eye movement you have, which is actually a so-called dream state. And in the steps in going to sleep uh, for a European, they see pictures with their eyes closed. They feel like the body is floating. They get a dream or illusion of violence or sex or some sort of form of psychotic withdrawal or stimulation of the melanin, which may cause nightmares for Europeans. And then they get into rapid eye movement sleep. What little they can get in, because the more melanin you have, the more rapid eye movement, REM sleep you have. Then they go into a deep sleep that senses do not react to stimuli or, you know, sense spirit, that's what they call a dead sleep. And once they go into the dead sleep, then they get into a, to come out of it, they become aroused with semi-consciousness of body and mind, then they awake. And the African sleep pattern is this. And it raises up high, so you can see it. Based on how much electromagnetic energy you can absorb, and that's caused by your third eye, which is above your pineal gland. What happens is you start generating and regenerating this electrical magnetic energy. First step is your male principle, which is electrical energy, decreases. Then the female energy, which is magnetic, increases. The second step is the male principle generates magnetism and regenerates electricity female principle regenerates magnetism and generates electricity. And the third eye, the pineal gland, the electromagnetic balancer, starts vibrating. Then you start sensing holistic pictures of the spirit and physical life, and you feel the earth cycle, lunar cycle, solar cycle, and galactical cycles. The emotional movement in the body and psychic dream trance occurs. Then you dream about life in a timeless state, and then you enter into the vibration of the pineal gland or rapid eye movement of sleep. And then it's ordered to reverse and you come out of the sensations of sleep. We don't sleep like the Europeans. We have too much melanin. We can't sleep like them. We're taught that we sleep like them. This is part of our brainwashing. Sleep is actually the inactivity of the mind. Rest is the inactivity of the body. Each race has a different biochemical sleep quality and quantity based on your culture. The aura color changes are cyclic based, is based upon the health of your pineal gland. The stimulation of melanin centers travel, the spirit travel. You go through each melanin uh, cluster chakra, as they call it. And you get into ancestral, psychic, and rhythmic deep breathing. You're introduced to sleep in the womb. Each zodiac sign has a different influence on your sleep pattern. The me melanated amniotic fluid is charged. You're introduced to sleep, you're introduced to eating. And the amniotic fluid is changed every three to four hours. So you get a, a meal every three to four hours in the womb. And this should be carried on when you are born. You should be put on the same schedule. You should have a milk feeding at six, perhaps a juice feeding or grape juice, orange juice at around 
10 and then another milk feeding at 12 and perhaps some grape juice or orange juice at 3 and then a milk feeding at 6. This will be more in line with the amniotic feeding schedule that you were introduced to in your mother's womb. Now, meat eaters, young meat eaters require 8 hours sleep or more. Someone on a fast would only require 2 to 4, 5 hours sleep. A vegetarian requires from 4 to 6 hours sleep because they're vibrating more melanin. The melan, melanin and melatonin action is between 11 and 2 p.m. That's when you get in the highest amount of melanin. And therefore, you get in the highest amount of REM sleep at those particular times. Now, a 15 to 30 minute nap for a vegetarian is equal to 2 hours sleep, whereas a 1 hour nap for a meat eater or a junk food eater is equal to 2 hours sleep. A diet of whole foods, raw foods, physical and spiritual exercise increases efficiency of sleep and decreases the duration. The body has these cycles from 4 a.m. to 12 noon is a cleansing cycle, from 12 noon to 7 p.m. is it when you eat food, and from 7 p.m. to 4 a.m. Is, is the energy is on a cellular level. That's when you sleep and rest. That's when you're going into your cleansing phase. What happens is your body becomes inactive. This is a holistic sequence of sleep. Your body becomes inactive, your mind becomes inactive, your spirit becomes active, and you enter into the black dot. And then you exit the black dot when your spirit, voluntary spirit becomes inactive and your, and your involuntary spirit becomes active and then your mind, your voluntary mind becomes active and your body becomes active. This is more or less the sequence of sleep in an African person. And we go through all of these cycles because we absorb more cycles, earth cycle, lunar cycle, solar cycle, and celestial cycle. This has an effect on our way we think. We think in these cycles. We think in an earth cycle, lunar cycle, which is the conscious emotions. We think in a solar cycle, which is electrical. And we think in a celestial cycle, which is magnetic. We receive information talking to each other this way, and we give out information talk, talking to each other this way. Information enters us this way, spoken information, celestial, solar, lunar, and earth. And when we speak, it exits up to us this way, earth, lunar, solar, celestial. That's why speaking is very rhythmic with African people. Now, a lot of folks that we've talked to in various states of mental illness, and this can be caused by their diet. If they're man manifesting a protein amino acid deficiency, they're going to be irritable when you talk to them. If they're having a tryptophan or serotonin deficiency or the deficiency of GABA amino benzoic acid, they're going to have aggressive behavior and they're going to be angry when you talk to them. Then you talk to them, you told them something one day and they seem to be forgetting things you tell them. You have to remind them all the time they're into dementia or senile changes. They may have psychotic behavior. They're running a vitamin D12 or folic acid, niacinamide or B6 deficiency. So a lot of times the nutrition is causing them to not to be able to have clear communications with you when they speak or clear communications with you when they hear you speak to them. All of this is going on when you're talking. Now, we as African people, our, our communications are more complex, more diversified, you see. Take a minute and look at this. Black communications. We have a speech code. We have certain sounds and syllables and words and intonation and grammar that we use, that we, the speech code that we use when we're talking to our friends or someone we know, or when we're talking in our families, we have a speech code. Then we have speech acts. Sometimes we're just testifying, saying what's going on. We want to hear amen. Sometimes when we're talking, we're just rapping. Sometimes we're just wolfing, saying how tough and strong we are because well, our ego has been damaged in some way. Sometimes we exchange an insult, so insults we receive from white supremacy don't hurt us, so we play the dozens. And we use other speech acts. A dozen, by the way, comes from those uh, slaves that were uh, some way handicapped or weren't able to do the type of labor they should do or mentally ill. They sold them by the dozens. So they were always talked about very badly to host the sales of them. That's a slave term, that's what I'm trying to say. Then we have styles of talking, dramatic repetition, the call and response. We improvise a lot. When something's really good, we talk about it and improvise around it. Then we have signification and indirect styles. This is black communications. Then while we're talking, we may use some kind of proverb, a wise saying about grandmother or father. This is incorporated in our talking. 
Then we have social linguistic rules for speaking. So we use inversions, we use to avoid certain words. Someone who's recently had a divorce or broken up with someone, you don't want to mention the word divorce because they're allowed to start talking about it, going into some kind of speech act, wolfing about it, or testifying that that person was no good and it was for their best to get away from them. Then we have nonverbal behavior, the proximate distance between the speakers. We have gestures that we use to uh, accentuate words. And we use certain eye movements to help us to uh, give words different meanings. And we use silence. And we have speaking, special speaking behaviors. We use voice inflections, discourse routines, and personal talk. All this is a part of black communications. It's not just talking. It's a whole speech code that we have. Move on to the next one here. Now, I want to get into some of the science of talking here. I can see this is not uh, staying on the paper too well. I hope you see this, so I have to like, hold it down a little bit. Break a while here. I hope you can get a good picture of that. Now, talking. Individual rights, human rights, civil rights, its ability to freely talk are uh, given by a group. You don't have individual rights, the li rights, which means the life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, unless you have a group that will sponsor it or give it to you. The group must have the social military power to protect your rights, or else you have no rights. Without a group, there are no individual rights. Without a social military group with power, there are no individual rights or free communication. All our communications are tainted because we're in a white supremacy. A person must have the total, total control over their culture to find their self, life, and spirituality and solve their problems. What your culture does is help you to find your self, your life, your spirituality, and it solves your problem. With other culture, which is a group that is free to educate, discipline, and protect, there cannot be individual freedoms, the freedom of speech. A culture that does not have social and military powers in a state of oppression, revolution, war, slavery, or constant therapy. Talking is a therapeutic activity to achieve ma'at, which is justice, reciprocity, correctness, harmony, liberty, and togetherness between African people. A person under the disease of white supremacy is suffering from slavery trauma and slave mentality. So our, our talking to each other is tainted by that, distorted by that. Slaves talking to slaves must direct the conversation towards ma'at. We're trying to repair each other from the damage of slavery and the damage of colonialism. And we use talk to correct ourselves and heal ourselves. Talking is a therapeutic activity that must bring togetherness and ma'at. If the conversation is not bringing togetherness, then you should say, let's stop talking. Because the purpose of our talking is to be therapeutic. The purpose of talking is to bring togetherness and unity. Talking should be constructive and not entertainment. Do not verbally attack, curse, put down, use name calling, use negative remarks, say a person is a liar, insult or verbally battle with someone. Talk cautiously as the person may be stubborn, angry, upset about something else, acting a fool, does not know the meaning of the words you're using. They may be a bragger, they may be stupid, they may be sexually frustrated, they may have an attitude, they may think they know it all, they may be on an ego trip, they want to preach to you or be concrete about their religion or leader or cause or group. So you have to be cautious when you're talking to one another. While talking, remember that black folks have a low tolerance for frustration, failure, conflict, being told what to do by another black person. Black folks have a low frustration low tolerance level for pain, low self-esteem, they have a short attention span. Our attention span is no longer than a CD. So you have to take a little commercial breaks when you talk to one another. They may be on junk food, as I mentioned before, which would inhibit their ability to absorb information. They may be on drugs, Tylenol, Ritalin. They may be in a state of unhappiness. All of this kind of distorts or shades the communication that they're able to give and receive. So you should be friendly and willing to compromise. Do not criticize a person or their leader. Criticize a specific behavior. Do not try to convert a person's religion or opinion. Share your opinion and let them share theirs. Exchange information, but do not try to convert. And try not to use slang or unnecessary words in the 
that in order to keep the talking clear. Let's go over this. Step one, I want you to be positive when you're talking to someone. I would appreciate it if you say, I would appreciate it if you would respect my opinion or feelings on this issue. So tell them I value our friendship and relationship. That's why I want to talk to you about this. I believe our conversation and relationship can include our individual religious choices and opinions. I respect your opinion. I need to know you respect and care about mine. Be positive. That's the first step. The second step is to address one issue at a time. Do not pile on a whole lot of issues. Just address one issue, one specific thing. I feel you're stubborn on this issue. Tend to want your way. You overlook my feelings. Don't like to talk about money. Get upset easy. That's not being specific. That's not pointing out an issue. Made a wrong decision. Don't allow me to talk. Those are too general, those statements. You want to be specific. And always put yourself yourself in their shoes. I say to them, I know you have said this before to me. And I have said some of the same things to you. I realize it can be frustrating to talk, but we must communicate. Now, you have to say what you want out of this communication. That's the next step. First, we were positive. Then we were very specific about it. We were talking about the specific behavior of the person or group we're being very specific. Then you put yourself in their shoes. Tell them, you know, it's maybe frustrating talking to me because it seems like I get on your nerves, but bear with me because I'm talking to you so we can have more togetherness. Then you point, you say what you want. That's step four. I would like for you to be brief in your conversations. This is what you want. Ask me how I feel. Stop preaching and, and talk. Listen to me and kind of repeat what I say so I know you heard me. Stop talking like it's logical, what's logical to you, you say, and what I say is illogical, stupid. Or it sounds like it's sometimes you're saying what is logical for you and what I, what's logical for me is stupid. And I, you take away my right to be different. So you say, this is what I want. Then you tell them what you'll give. This would encourage me to say, stay in the conversation or relationship with you. If you would just accept what I have to say or take time to listen. This is what you're going to give them. I will make changes in my feelings or behavior so you will want to talk to me more. I'm willing to give you this if you do this. You, what you want and what you will give. You have to have rewards and, pun and punishment in conversations and in all your behavior. If a child makes an A, that's a reward. If they don't do good in school, they get an F, that's punishment. Rewards and punishments. That. The last step is closure. This is the step. I would like for each of us to say what we feel and change for the better. I feel that the more togetherness and unity between us will help us have more unity and togetherness in our race. What do you think about our talking? So we have these steps to take. Just like we have steps and plans and basketball and football. They go in these huddles and make these plans. We're making our plans and talking. We're going to be positive. We're going to address the issue. We're going to put ourselves in another person's shoes. We tell a person what, I, what we want from them, and we tell a person what we'll give. Now then, now this all sounds pretty good, but we have to put this in some kind of action here. Let's put it in action. We went over some of the criticism here. This is what we're doing. We're being critical. But remember, we are being constructive in our criticism. We are targeting the behavior you want to criticize or point out. You point it out. Be specific. I don't like the way you handle a fork and spoon. Be very specific. Don't say, I don't like the way you eat. Make your criticism as, as specific as possible. Be sure the behavior you are criticizing can be changed. Maybe they can't hold a spoon any better because they have arthritis of the hand or something. If it cannot, be changed and stop your criticism. Use I statements. Do not make it seem as though you're stating a fact. You're only giving your opinion. Make sure it's opinion, not fact. Avoid threats or accusations. Make sure the other person understands your criticism and the reason for it. And don't mumble or talk too fast. Number six, don't go over the point. Don't be labored just going over it, lengthy and repeated criticism. Simply 
cause the other person to tune you out. You're just going on to one of your boring lectures, offering incentives. That's what I said. Give a person a reward for doing what they what you asked them to do, and commit yourself to sharing a problem. If you change, I'll change. Don't allow your negative feelings to color your words. Watch your voice for overtones and hostility and sarcasm. Avoid angry gestures such as clenched fists, scrawls or frowns or pointing your fingers. Nonverbal attitudes should reinforce your words, not contradict them. Show that you put yourself in the other person's shoes as empathize with the other person's problem and hold criticism for the appropriate time and place. Consider trying to de diffuse the hostility, hostile response to criticism by predicting the other person's reaction. In other words, I know I can say this to you because I know you will take it well. If your criticism produces positive results, give verbal recognition. So I, I see that you are concerned about our relationship and I realize you're making an effort and I appreciate it. Now, you want to be very mindful that this is an art and a science. You just can't say anything you want, anytime you want, whenever you want. There's appropriate time to say things. And that's what I'm trying to point out in this. You don't have to prove yourself or think that you're being attacked when you're being criticized. You should listen carefully. What is, what is the person saying? It may be helpful. And try not to find out what this person wants so you won't try to find out what the person wants so you won't repeat the same mistake. And stay relaxed. That's the main thing. And I have some relaxing techniques there. A lot of us get tensed in conversations. So you find yourself a quiet place so you won't be disturbed and just practice being relaxed. Make your fists, your fists clench and then relax it, tightening and loosen it. Suck in your stomach muscle and hold it for a period of time and then let it out. That relaxes it. Clench your jaw and then open your mouth as wide as you can. That relaxes it. Shut your eyes very hard and open them very wide. That relaxes it. Push down your neck so it sinks between your shoulders. And then lift your neck up. That helps relax it. Inhale, take in a slow breath and breathe out very slow. That helps you to relax. Stretch your arms, make them stiff and then let them go loose. Do the same with your legs. And try to put in some of these, combining some of these techniques together. This way to get some of the tension out of you when you're taking a criticism or giving a criticism. Now, I want to show you what you should say here. Respond to persons who speak to you in a gruff, uncouth, profane, or hostile manner by doing the following. Be polite. Listen carefully to each word spoken. Do not comment on that statement. I mean, don't interrupt them and say this and that. Just be polite and listen. Don't comment. Do answer questions and answer them politely and answer in a manner that is likely to have the most constructive, just results. Avoid answering or asking questions in a hostile, smart alecky manner. Repeat. Do not comment on statements. Do not answer questions. Let me give you an example here. Now, a white person. You niggers are more trouble than you are worth. A black person, no comment. A white person. Why do you niggas act the way you do? A white person, a black person, because of racism. That's all you need to say. A white person's statement, don't go blaming everything on the white man. Niggas are just plain no good, that's all. The black person, no comment. A white person, we have done an awful lot to help you people, but you don't seem to appreciate it. In fact, you get worse than ever. Black person, no comment. This may be hard to do, but this is a way to communicate very effectively with, person, with a person who's hostile, upset. Just make no comment. Now, people, when people ask you about yourself, avoid telling them anything unless they are willing to answer or willing to ask them the same type of question about themselves. This includes any detailed question relating to your money, your education, entertainment, your sex life, everything. The reason? 
people ask questions of others but who are opposed to answering the same type of questions about themselves are not justified in asking the same type of question. Now I'm going to skip down to uh, do not speak. Do not speak or act as if you are exercising the power of command to others when you are in truth only carrying messages from those who have the power of command. In any situation, under white supremacy, under racism, under oppression, black people do not have the power. White people control the school system, the banks. All we're doing is carrying out their acts or their wishes. If we own the, own the school system and the banks, then it will be a different situation. But all we're doing is reflecting the fact that we're under oppression. Do not attempt to answer a question until you are prepared to answer it in such a manner that the answer helps to not merely relate facts, but also to reveal truth. The reason and explanation for that is some selected facts presented in a special manner do not always reveal truth. And he raises up high as you can see it. Facts should always be presented in such a manner that truth is revealed. Facts can and are and oftentimes presented in such a manner as to remote falsehood. If truth is not revealed through the correct presentation of facts, it is impossible to impossible to promote justice and mod or truth. To move on here, we're gonna move a little faster now. If you are asked a question and you do not know the answer to that question, always say you don't know. That's because every remark that's made by any person at any time about any subject should be made in a manner that helps to eliminate falsehood as well as helps to produce justice correctness and correctness, which we call ma'at. Do not allow yourself to be rushed into answering a question when you believe that you are not prepared to answer in a manner that will reveal truth, promote justice, and promote correctness, which we call ma'at. The reason explanations for that is a so-called answer to a question that does not reveal truth, promote justice, or promote correctness is not an answer. It is a non-answer. The purpose of conversation, the purpose of being together, the purpose of a marriage is to promote ma'at. The purpose of a family is to promote and produce ma'at. That's the higher calling. Anything less is an attempt at being married, attempt at having a relationship, attempt at having a conversation. Another thing that causes conflict when we're talking is we think that one thing is better than the other. My leader is better than your leader. My group is better than your group. My philosophy is better than your group. This better causes conflict. Many people believe that if a person is tall or short, old or young, fast or slow, black or white, fat or slim, dull or smart, that that person is better or not better than another. That promotes conflict. Many a person thinks that if he or she is smarter than another person or smarter than another person or in any more, in any area, that, uh, any more areas of activity at a particular time and place then he or she has the right or duty to take unjust advantage of a person because they're smarter than a person. Such persons also think that people who are not smart should pay for not being smart by idolizing those persons who are smart. Anyone who is smart you think is important and you idolize and you put them on a stool and actually they're just being normal. This manner of thinking is one of the major forces in supporting the commission of non-just acts among the people of the known universe. A person who is smarter than another person is not a better person. A better person is a person who knows and understands truth and who uses truth in such a matter that justice and correctness, which we call mahat, is produced. A person who is 30 years of age is no better than a newly born infant, though the 30-year-old person may be able to do more, but that doesn't mean they're better. A person who exists is no better than a person who is dead, who doesn't exist, though the person who exists may be able to do more, that doesn't mean they're better. A person that can see is no better than a person who cannot see. Though the person who can see may be able to do more, that doesn't make them better. This better, my group is better than your group, my philosophy is better than your philosophy, my religion is better than your religion, my religion is a true black religion, all that does is promote jealousy and conflict. And that's what white people want us to do. Keep jealousy and conflict among us, among us so we can be divided and therefore we can be conquered. 
When discussing religious matters with those who are willing, always do the following. State the name and title of your religion. State and describe anything that your religion requires you to do. You can ask questions of the other person's religion and what their religion requires them to do. And you can remind the others that you expect them to follow their religion. Speak and act in such a manner that there is no conflict between your religion and your politics. Now, to the extent that any religion is in any way involved with people, that religion is political. There is no such thing as a non-political religion. If it's involved with people, cause it's re politics, because politics is nothing more nor nothing less than people relationships. Any relationship in any area of activity between one person and another person is politics. The only way that a religious person can avoid being involved in politics is for that person to not have anything to do with any other person at any time in any place. So we're always political because politics means being involved. Do not assume that a person who says that he or she is a Christian, a Jew, or Muslim, or Buddhist is one. Do not assume that a person who says he or she is a Christian, a Jew, or Muslim, or Buddhist is one all the time. Sometimes they're Muslim, sometimes they're not. Sometimes they're Jews, sometimes they're not. A person who calls him or herself a Christian may or may not be a Christian. A person who calls himself a Muslim may or may not be a Muslim all of the time. We have to be clear on this. A person who's a professional football player doesn't mean they're playing professional football all the time. We know this in other areas, but we don't seem to understand that when it involves a religion. Avoid making a comparison between yourself and other blacks. Avoid measuring yourself by watching other black people, what other black people do. Do not seek excuses or nitpick or gossip. Particularly, do not, for any reason, spend time, energy, or money trying to show off. Because this produces conflict. Conflict produces jealousy. Jealousy produces envy. Envy produces conflict. Many black people spend too much time comparing themselves with each other. They enjoy watching each other. They spend much time and energy gossiping about each other and showing great interest in nitpicking the trivial comings and goings of each other. This person is not Afrocentric. This person is not black. This person is not practicing my art. This person is not Afrocentric. This person is Negro. This person is African. This person... See, we're doing all this nitpicking which promotes conflict. Many of them spend the best part of their reason for existence seeking to promote jealousy, envy, and snobbery among themselves. However, if one understands anything about the people of the known universe, one should, should certainly understand that considering all things, there is nothing involved in a black person to envy, nothing to be jealous about, nothing to be snobbish about. There is nothing about such behavior that is constructive or complementary. Such behavior only helps to maintain the status quo of injustice and incorrectness, particularly the injustice and incorrectness expressed in the form of white supremacy. The objective is to keep us in conflict so we can be controlled. So we have to stop this nitpicking, saying this person is better than that person, measuring yourself by another person. If that person is not free in every aspect of their life, economically, social, religiously, then they are in no better shape than you are. It's nothing to compare. Comparing one slave to another slave, you're both slaves. What's the comparison for? The only thing you compare yourself is with someone who's free. And that we can't do unless the group sponsors that freedom. Try to minimize conflict. When a person with whom you are conversing becomes angry and starts calling you names, cursing, do not do the same thing. Instead, do the following two things. Say to him or her, I will talk to you at some other time. The second thing you do is depart from him or her company. We're trying to produce my eye. That's the purpose of conversation. That's what the whole science about conversation is about. Now, the value of any religion that you have should be determined by how it affects people in a way that they relate to each other as, as, well, as, that, uh, as well as all that is in the universe. Do not argue about or speak against any religion except the religion of white supremacy. When religious matters are presented to you by others, explain your religion to them, ask them to explain their religion to you, ask them to explain what their religious requires them to do and say and or not to do and say in all areas and all activities, economically, educational, entertainment, labor, and all that. That's as far as you have to go with this religion. Minimize anger or hostility between yourself and those with whom you are exchanging views. If a person seems to be angry or hostile toward what you're saying, here's what you should do. Ask the anger person this question. Do you wish for me to be silent and not to express my views to you? 
If the answer is yes, then be silent and or do not express your views to that person. Now, if the answer is no, then you can continue on talking. We have to perfect this science of talking to each other. However, because we're under stress all the time, because we're under whites of racism all the time, we have a lot of high blood pressure and we're not getting enough oxygen nutrients to our brains. So hypertension, high blood pressure, and hyperactivity are a factor. We have to feed our brains properly. And to do that, we have to feed our minds properly. So if you're suffering from high blood pressure, hypertension, you should take your calcium, magnesium, eat your food as raw as possible, use selenium, which is good for your reproductive system, perhaps take some coenzyme Q10 or garlic capsule, which is good for cholesterol, high blood pressure, germanium, you may need some glutamine, which is good for your memory and gets rid of the ammonia in your system, and vitamin C, which is robbed from you by cars, computers, and air pollution, lecithin, which helps feed your brain and gets rid of impurities, vitamin E, and we may need some digestive enzyme and some kelp and some multivitamins and minerals that are derived from vegetables. Remember that the folks that you do talk to may be in one of these kind of phases. They may be suffering from grief or loss, especially one of their soap opera characters that died or one of their entertainers such as a uh, uh, to Tupac Tukor or um, Biggie Smalls has died and they're going through some grief and loss. A lot of our children have friends of theirs who died from AIDS or died from a drive-by in some way in a form of grief or loss and we're not acknowledging that. They may have upset stomachs, headaches, they may cry, they may be suffering from separation and anxiety, they may not be able to focus on what you're saying because one of their little television characters has died. Or they may have some kind of allergic condition, a yeast infection, which causes anger and hostility. They may have a depressed immune system. They may not be able to absorb their nutrients properly. That's going to cause them to be restless and nervous. Let me raise this up a little higher. Restless and nervous, depressed. They may have hearing difficulties because they have an allergic reaction. And all this feeds into your conversation with them. They have emotional outbursts for no reason have anxiety, fear, phobic, or panic attacks. We have to be mindful of this, that we are not altogether talking to healthy people, physically or mentally. A lot of us are having self-destructive behaviors. We are either religious puppets, these are individuals who are religious fanatics. Every word that comes out of their mouth is a quote from the Bible or the Quran. They hide behind their religious leaders. And they will do whatever the preacher tells them to do or think. They judge other people by their own religious standards. And they give 10% of their money and always donating their time and energy to their religion, not to the furthering of their race. They have some form of self-hatred. These are self-destructive behaviors. They distrust African leaders. They feel, they feel good now syndrome. That's the syndrome where they're plotting what they're going to do with their money before they get their paycheck. They're always trying to buy happiness, buy their way out of being oppressed. They have bad interpersonal relationships. They're egotistic or selfish. All of this has taken a, a toll on our ability to communicate with each other. They internalize stereotypes. These individuals have accepted the stereotypes given by them by whites. They always, you find these Negroes, they're always cracking jokes around white people, the center of attention, saying something that's funny all the time. Uh, they have uh, problems with close they have a closed point of view. It's either their way or no way. They shut down communication. They have negative thinking. They have mental illness. They're paranoid about white people. They mistrust their own thinking and they mistrust yours. And all of them may be in some form of sexual deviancy or physically unfit. And all of this is feeding into your relationship. Aside from the fact that a lot of us come from dysfunctional families. And this can alter your ability to relate to another African person. This communication and listening starts in the family. And if they're from a dysfunctional family, their ability to communicate is not well. Communication may well be the most important ingredient in the making of a healthy family. The highest level of understanding and respect exists within families who freely express thought, convey emotions, seek guidance, and relate experience to one another. They are using the art and science of communication, of talking. They support each other. Number three, they show respect for each other. 
They develop a sense of trust, number four. They have a sense of play and humor with each other. They teach each other right and wrong. But since most of us come from this dysfunctional family, this also destroys our ability to communicate. And it shows up in our ability to have relationships. Because relationship is an ongoing process. It changes, it grows, it develops just like a child. It stumbles, it makes mistakes, it gets up again, tries to walk, it slips down. And relationships grow. And it requires a spiritual ritual. And you have to be mindful that men talk to express ideas and then their feelings. Men grow in a different sequence. So they listen a different way and they talk in a different way. The first way that a man talks is through sensation. They sense what is going on through their senses, what they see and what they hear. And then they think about the problem. Then they refine their thinking with the, and their thoughts and their feelings. And then they project it to the next person, their mate, whoever they're talking to. Information leaves the male this way and comes into the male this way. Adulthood, manhood, youth, and childhood. Women usually talk to express feelings and ideas. Women grow in this sequence. Childhood, womanhood, youth, and adulthood. Information leaves this way, and information comes in this way. That's why you see a little conflict here between womanhood and a, and a woman, and youth and a man. That's when you say that girls are growing faster than the boys are more mature because they're not at the same level at that sequence there. You have to communicate, listen, and respect each other's thoughts and feelings. This is what's required in a relationship. This is the, the talking science. You have to behave in public. You only criticize or argue privately with your mate or with your friend. Not in public. Or with someone in your family. Not in public. Arguments and criticism are used to gain closeness. The purpose of arguing, the purpose of criticizing, is to bring more togetherness, more, more, more rights, more justice, more correctness. Watch your words in argument. Do not curse or interrupt. Your mate is your companion, not your clone. Your mate is not perfect, they have problems, they have good habits, bad habits, which may never change. If you accept the best, you have to accept the rest. Your mate is not psychic, they can't predict what you're going to say the next moment, or say, or do. They're not psychic, they don't know what you feel, when you feel, how you feel. Say please and thank you and good morning to each other, forgive each other, and compromise. Love yourself, recognize your talents and gifts and faults, have a hobby, have a purpose to your life. Some things you can't solve in your life. And your friend and your families can't solve it either. So all they can do is witness your insolubles. Have family meetings and activities. This helps the relationship. You have a friend, you have meetings with your friends, you discuss things, you go places with your friend, and y'all plot you, you're going to take a trip, you and your friend, or budget, or what you're going to do if you went to the Million Man's March or the Million Woman's March. You plan meetings and activities and budgets. Now, do not say you never listen, which means I know who you are and don't need your version. Don't combine a series of past arguments. Stay on one issue at a time. And don't assume what's on the person's mind and what the person is going to do. Assume nothing. Assumption is the mother of all mistakes. Think, don't think your mate is totally aware all the times of their own behavior and yours. Feel, don't think you feel you know your mate because you've had sex. Think, don't think that love will give you everything you need. You get some things from your spiritual growth and development, some things from your career, some things, and all that makes a, a holistic life, but don't think that love is going to give you everything that you need whenever you need it. And don't become an expert psychotherapist with, in your relationship. You telling the person you did this because of that. And when they try to tell you why you did it, you say, I don't need to know what you what you have to say about it, or your opinion, or your aversion, going into that. Don't go to bed angry if you're in a relationship. Always apologize and go to bed in harmony with each other. Now then. Help give the word love its correct meaning. Avoid using the word love. Describe any feeling or condition that now exists. Love is a speech or action that produces results positive mahat and results. That's love. Love is speech and action that results in the use of truth in a manner that definitely promotes the practice of justice and correctness, which is mahat. Now, do not depend on or ask others to give you respect. Do not demand that others respect you. 
Let's get down to the reason and explanation. There is only one form of true respect. It is self-respect and the respect that one gives to oneself. Make a daily practice. Make a daily practice observing everything that people do and ask and ask yourself why are they doing what they are doing and for what ultimate purpose. Now you see someone is joking all the time and telling a lot of jokes, you observe that and you say, well, why are they doing that? Why are they doing what they're doing? They're doing that to get attention. The ultimate purpose of what they're doing is attention. That's what you learn from observations. I want to skip down to something that a lot of us have difficulty with, and that's sexual criticism. Sexual criticism. What is the most difficult sexual criticism for you to give, and why? What is the most difficult sexual criticism for you to take and why? What are your partner's most frequent sexual criticisms of you? Which of the following feelings do you most frequently associate with sexual criticism? Rejection, depression, resentment, pleasure, desire to please, anger, love, being pressured, shame, being used. Do you give sexual criticism during lovemaking before or after? Do you give sexual criticism via nonverbal communication? Does your partner offer sexual criticism nonverbally? Are you afraid that sexual criticism will hurt your partner's feelings? These are sexual criticisms. A lot of us have difficulty with that. When given sexual criticism, do you tell your partner only what you do not like? Does sexual criticism enhance your sexual relationships? Do you ask your partner for sexual criticism? Do you, does your partner ask you for sexual criticism? Are you sarcastic when you give sexual criticism? Are your criticism based on your expectations of how love and making should be? Or the latest thing on Oprah's show? Do you find you consistently give sexual criticism to your partner? Does your partner consistently give you the same sexual criticism? Does your, do you discuss sexual criticism with your partner at times other than when you make love? When you give sexual criticism, does it tend to lessen the pleasure of lovemaking for you? It raises up something, you can see it. Do you demonstrate to your partner how to resolve the sexual criticism you give? Does your partner demonstrate to you how to resolve his or her sexual criticism? Are you inhibited in your language when giving sexual criticism? Over here, look over here. Generalize. You never spend enough time in foreplay. Or you always take too long to reach a climax. That's generalization. Again, you have to be specific. Say what you want. Say what you'll give. And say what the reward is for the person complying with what your wishes are. Faulty feedback. I wish you wouldn't touch me that way. I mean, you got to be specific. What way? Shamming. What's happened to you? There is not much starch in your erection. You're shaming the person. Blaming. If you could last longer, I wouldn't feel so frustrated. Accusing question. What? Is that what you call being gentle? This does not promote harmony. There are other ways to talk. As I mentioned before, be specific. Stick to one issue. Say what you'll give if the person changes their behavior and what, what you will receive if the person changes their behavior. Do not show resentment at being sexually rejected. Do not express anger or contempt for a female because she lets you know that she does not want to engage in sexual intercourse with you. Be courteous to her, thank her, and if you continue to talk to her, do not pester her about having sex. The reason reason for that is most females, most of the time, know who they desire to engage in sexual intercourse with. It is neither correct nor just and desirable for a female to submit to sexual intercourse with a male simply because that is what he, he wants to do. No male should want a female to have sexual intercourse with him if, if she is not, by her own desire, willing to do so. That's called petty rape, by the way. Let me raise this up some so we can get through this. Give Give most sexual attention and all sexual allegiance only to those victims of racism. Those victims of racism. In other words, don't have sex with white people. Don't pay any sexual attention to them. You know it's very perverted to look at white people anyway. You look at their behinds, which is a form of sexual homosexuality. So we look at each other's behind, which is practicing sexual homosexuality. And that's the white people's way of looking at each other. We African people, we look at people spiritually. If you engage with sex with white people, you'll start getting into that kind of perversion. And that will feed into how you react to other African people. And so you're spreading that kind of disease amongst us. So just stay away from the critters. Seek to engage in sexual intercourse and or sexual play only with African people. 
again, in any relationship, an African person has with a white person is that of a child, that of a slave with a master. That is the result of white supremacy. Let me see if we can uh, finish up here. Avoid asking a person about his or her sexual activities unless you are willing to tell that person everything about your own. Avoid telling a person about your sexual activities unless that person is willing to tell you everything about his or her own. Before engaging in, in an act of sexual intercourse or sexual play with another person, ask yourself this question and answer truthfully. Would I want this person to know everything that there is to know about me at all times, in all places, in all things, and if not, why not? The reason the explanation for this is truth, not falsehood, should be a basic part of our relationship. The purpose of sexual intercourse is to establish my act, to promote truth and righteousness. Avoid promoting acts of sexual prostitution, bribes, or unjust proposals of any kind. It is incorrect to use money, gifts, or any similar material possession or material medium as exchange for sex. That is a form of slavery. That is behaving like white people. Now let's just go to the children, enough with us adults. How to criticize children, that's very important. There are guidelines for talking to children. There's an art and science to it. Use words that the child can understand. Be sure your criticism is age appropriate. Don't criticize a youngster for doing something beyond his capabilities. Be brief, avoid lectures and preaching, because that's boring, and they're going to turn off to this long speech of yours. Just be precise and don't use unnecessary words and don't use slang. Protect the child's self-image. Don't criticize them around other children in public that may be hurting the child. You have to protect their character. Be honest with them. Don't use threats. If you do this, I'm not going to do that. Don't threaten. If you're going to punish, punish. But don't threaten or promise punishment. Be involved. Commit your time and energy to the criticism process. Follow through. If you're going to do something, do it. Children model behavior. Choose a model that has status for the child. Be sure the child can perform the behavior that is to be modeled. Be sure there's ample opportunity for the child to observe the behavior. It's consistent. When you're teaching a child, for instance, to put on the shoe, and you say, put on your shoes, and they put on the shoe incorrectly, you can't stop them in the middle of the process while they're putting on the shoe, the shoe on the wrong foot, because you said put the shoe on. That's one step. If you say put the shoe on the correct foot, that's two steps. And if you're saying put the, 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 the right shoe on the left foot, and say put it on right, then they, that's confusing because you mean put it on left. So the child has to deal with all this information that you're taking for granted. And that's why it's most difficult because we're using English and English is a very confusing language. Now, guidelines for using buildups. Compliment the child if they follow through on your criticism and try to alter their behavior. Guidelines for spotlighting consequences. Don't let this technique start an argument. The critic must maintain a neutral stance. This is what your classmates will do. Not will do, not me. You tell them that they are going to suffer consequences for behaving this way. Emphasize, emphasize that while the consequences are possible, they do not have to occur if there is a change in the child's behavior. We have to be more careful in using our language skills with children so that they may learn the correct language skills. Now, to avoid conflicts, getting into arguments, avoid visiting people at their places except for one or more of the following purposes. To exchange views on ways and means of getting rid of white supremacy or being oppressed or bringing more Afrocentricity into our community. That's why you get together. Exchanges of views on ways and means of revealing truth, which is ma'at, and using truth to promote just and correctness, which is ma'at. Assist in doing constructive labor or for sexual intercourse. Always seek to be alone except when doing the following. Doing work that requires the help of others. Talking and listening to others about ways and means of eliminating white racism, oppression, or poverty. That's why we should get together, but this getting together all the time is not good. It helps liquidize our efforts. Now what we're talking about 
It's restoring our African <clears throat> skills and the art and science of communicating. Being more courteous with each other. Understanding we have handicaps, we suffer from oppression, and this in some ways can distort the way we see ourselves and the way we see others. This is a brief overview of the art and science of communicating. Turn out.